Hi, I'm the Rap Critic. Let's talk about Wale. Now, Wale actually got signed a couple of years back under Universal's label and put out attention deficit. Coincidentally, a condition that his label must have suffered because they didn't pay nearly as much attention to his album as they should have, seeing that his singles were barely promoted and his first week sales for attention deficit were about 28,000 copies, specifically because his label had only shipped 30,000 copies. So Wale was a little unhappy about that, completely leaving that label to sign with Warner Brothers under Maybach Music Group, whose label head was... Rick Ross. Well, Rick Ross has gotten a lot better in the last few years. I mean, not in the sense that he's breaking the mold as a mainstream rapper by focusing mainly on topics that don't revolve around money, women, and drugs. <laughs> yeah, that's never gonna happen. But lyrically, at least he's gotten better at talking about those topics. Wheels look like a Ferris, your jeweler should be embarrassed. I break the rule of my moolah, produce the carrots. Let's bow our heads, I gave you something to cherish. Which leaves the question, will Wale, under the direction of Rick Ross, keep the artistic integrity that I've heard on his mixtapes? Well, let's check out the single from his latest album. Now, it's a love song, and I know that's already setting off a few flags, but if anything, this song has the best love song title ever. Lotus Flower Bomb Lotus Flower Bomb? That sounds like something out of a Super Mario game. I mean, where did he get the name for that? That's just... Ah. Uh, using product placement for the title of your song. Okay, sure it kind of sounds like a sellout move, but hey, that doesn't mean it has to be a bad song or that he's lost his integrity as an artist. These are trying economic times, and sales aren't all they used to be. That's why there are so many advertisements and music videos nowadays. And hey, if Method Man can make a Sour Patch Kids commercial into a good rap, there's possibility for anything in the song. Besides, it's a good title regardless of the tie-in, and the Lotus Flower does have a rich history, being a representative of love and beauty. So this song could be a dedication to the essence of a woman's femininity and... Goodbye, subtlety. So we start the video with the girl being annoyed by Wale. Can I help you with something? And not one of those she obviously admires his charm but doesn't want to show it kind of ways. No, she's, she, she really doesn't like him. Why are you always coming in here trying to be fresh, huh? <laughs> so I guess you think I'm fresh, right? You have to put it in there, right? Right? Hello. But then the music video starts, so I guess she likes him now. Rap some real quick. I want to enjoy the luxury of like not knowing each other for real. Now, he's either enjoying the mystique and wonder of meeting a new woman in his life that he'll eventually want to get to know, or talking to a prostitute. Honestly, I hope it's the first one, because I think we've heard enough songs about the second. Flower bomb. Let me guess your favorite fragrance. I hope it's the one that I just wrote a song about, because if not, I just wasted a lot of private placement to impress you. You got that bomb. <laughs> I'm trying to detonate you. Wait, is this the edited version? You got that bomb. <laughs> Did I miss a joke, or...? Or maybe he's taking a cue from the great Heavy D, not cursing. Yo, Nick, go, but I be damned. Never mind. And this is the unedited version of the song, so why would he edit out some words and not others? Well, whatever, he's only done it once. Maybe he just gave up that word for Lynn or something like that. I don't know. Let's just keep going. Try to keep your spirits up, little vodka, whatever. Took it forever to get dressed. I acknowledge your effort. That's a good line to throw in, seeing that women do put a lot of time into their clothing when they go out to parties. Of course, I honestly don't see why they do. I mean, look at us when we go out to clubs. This is the evolution of our party apparel. Hmm, well that was an easy transition. Hey, girls, what are you guys doing? Oh, going through tens of thousands of different styles? Well, I'm gonna think you're hot either way, so... But, but do what you do. Shawty, wear your baton, racing through my mind like She heard that, I got that work, I heard that she been on strike. I'm going to ignore the questionability of using the old racing through my mind joke, but instead praise this line for finding a creative way to say that this girl isn't looking for a relationship, that he actively wants to change that. I can be your boyfriend, be your nigga, or a friend with perks. Now in this line, he makes it apparent that he doesn't know what kind of status that he wants with this girl, but he knows that he does want her in his life in some way. But, uh, what exactly does that second title imply? I mean, boyfriend implies a relationship plus sex. A friend with perks implies no relationship and just sex. So I'm guessing that second title implies... Friendzone? Since when did that mean friendzone? I'm just trying to work that. They just trying to work your nerves. He just did it again. You know, when you don't want a curse in the song, you, you substitute the curse word for another word. Did, did you guys just forget to do a second track recording? 
Because on the unedited version of a song, this just sounds awkward. I'm just trying to read your mind. I'm just trying to feed you mine. I'm just trying to give you like They just trying to live your life. Hey, Miguel, we'll get to you in a second, okay? Jeez, I hate when the chorus overlaps the verse like that. Let the man finish. Also, it makes it really hard to sing along to. I'm just trying to leave you like they just trying to leave you to the fantasy. Now, what was I going to say? Crap. Forgot. Fine, Miguel. Sing the chorus already. Now, I really dig this chorus as it serves to perfectly tie together the feel of Pat Benatar. I'm sorry. Is that a, is that a picture of Pat Benatar in your jean jacket? Sorry, that's just one of the last people I expect to see on a piece of clothing in a rap music video. But, uh, but, but I digress. Flower mom, can I blow up on your mind? This is not no Sandra Bull, but your potion number nine. Ooh, referencing a cheesy 90s rom-com, indicating to a girl that he might have actually watched it? This guy's a love song genius. Navigating through her eyes, destination to her thighs. That's right, eyes are the windows to the soul. Indicating that Wally knows one must mentally stimulate a woman before sexual interaction. Although judging from this video's intro, I don't think he's doing it right. Hey, hey, you trying to hypnotize her or something? Talk to the woman. And we way too young to know love. Maybe not, but we don't need no rush. Shh, do you hear that? That's the sound of honesty and humility in a rap love song, instead of just talking about how awesome he is and how she needs to leave her boyfriend for him. Don't believe in love at first sight, but believe in love at first sight. <laughs> Three times. Really? Dude, either you curse or you don't curse. Make up your mind. Can I be with you just one night? I can wear you out inside. I can tell you like persistence, but I make you come and try. What? Hey, if you think a rapper's gonna say anything less of his sexual prowess, you're in the wrong genre of music. Easy, baby, you the bomb and all, but I'd be damned if I did not land my or at least try. Can I speak up? Was it peace out? Can we eat lunch? Despite the wordplay, I like how he kind of sounds vulnerable here. And the fact that he wants to continue his relationship with the girl in some way, but he doesn't know how to perfectly work it out. And that's what pushes this past the typical radio love song. Can we take shots with your flavor? Flat drinks we call eight cups. That's that's funny. I just think I need one night, slightly more if it's done right with that gorgeous face. I don't know your name, it ain't important, babe, because I'm gonna call you mine. No, no, I think the name eventually kind of becomes important when meeting someone. But I like how right before the slight surge of male chauvinism pops up, Miguel comes in cutting him off like, Yeah, girl, I don't need to know your name because you're mine, so I want oh you God, to go in that kitchen. My fantasy. But disregarding that last line, this is a pretty good song. I'd give it a four out of five stars. The minimalist beat, coupled with Miguel's floating vocals over the track, provide an intimate atmosphere for Wale's open thoughts to a girl that he's just met, and is still trying to figure out what his relationship with her should be. It just sounds like an honest song, and I dig that. Hello! Hello! Sorry babe, just had a music video stroke for about three minutes. It happens. I'm the rap critic. You don't have to like my opinion, but I don't have to like your song. Except, except when I do, because the... yeah. It's time to kick up first, do your man a favor, and don't curse.